Welcome to Intro to Light. This is a beginner course where things will be simplified. The understanding of light can be very complicated and frustrating. Not here though. So in this presentation, we'll discuss what red light therapy is, what it does, its history, the different styles of devices, the benefits of pulsing light, and what you need to know to use red light safely and effectively. So what is light and why do we need it? We will focus on the utilization of specific wavelengths of light that have been proven effective through decades of research, but we'll also touch on light in general to give a better understanding. We all know that the human body needs light to be healthy. With technology, we can now take the specific wavelengths of sunlight known to be beneficial and put it right in your home. And with the right kind of light and the right dose, our bodies can do things that we only thought possible with chemicals and medications. So let's take a step back. Have you ever wondered why the sky is blue? Or why nature is so green? Why the sunset or sunrise is orange, red, yellow? Let's go back in time to high school science. Fun stuff. Remember Roy G. Biv? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. These are the visible colors of the sunlight spectrum. So when we see blue skies or distant blue mountains, it's because the blue wavelengths from the sun are dominant in our atmosphere. When we see red, orange, yellow, is because those wavelengths are dominant at that particular time of day. When we see objects with a certain color, like green grass, it's the green wavelengths that are reflecting off it and being picked up by the cones in our eyes. Through evolution, our cells have evolved to take full advantage of what our environment offers. But these colors are just a tiny fraction of the total wavelengths of the sun. They just happen to be the ones the cones in our eyes pick up and relay to our brain. What do these wavelengths mean to us? We know the benefits of UV rays in helping the body produce vitamin D. We also know UV rays harmful effects if overexposed. We know the harmful effects of gamma and x-rays, which are fortunately blocked by the atmosphere. Why are wavelengths so vital? We know blue is key to balancing our circadian rhythm. In the morning, it suppresses the sleep hormone melatonin and increases the energy hormone serotonin. But we know too much blue light coming from our household bulbs and electronics can be detrimental to us, particularly if used in the evening and night as it keeps the serotonin elevated, melatonin suppressed, making sleep difficult. Green has a calming effect on the body. There's a reason why we seek out parks and grass and wilderness. And thus, it's no surprise that green light is now being used to reduce depression and migraines. Red and orange have a protective and healing effect. The morning sun actually gives our skin cells increased resistance to the more harmful UV rays during noon, while evening red and orange has a healing effect and increases melatonin to aid in sleep. So why is this so important? It's because many of us are not getting the needed benefits of the sun because we live in northern climates. We tend to stay indoors, and if we go outside, we cover ourselves with clothes and protective lotions. But now with technology, we can harness the power of light by isolating the specific wavelengths of light that we know through countless studies has an amazing benefit on our cells, allowing us to receive these benefits within the comfort of our own home. There's a very good reason why so many clinics, professional sports teams, Olympic teams, veterinarians, chiropractors, physical therapists, optometrists, dentists, the U.S. military, NASA, and so on have been using light. The key is figuring out what is best for your needs. The proper dose and wavelengths will have a significant influence on your health, so it's important to understand how it works and which is best for you. So how does this actually work? 
Let's start with the basics. Light enters our body, enters our cells. Within those cells are mitochondria. If you remember from high school, the mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cells. The absorbed light helps the mitochondria produce greater quantities of energy called ATP. This energy is needed for our bodies to function. Why do we need this extra ATP? Due to our environment, we get less sunlight. Our diet isn't ideal. We have increased stress. We exercise less. We are surrounded by greater toxicities and pollution. All these lead to a dysfunction in our cells and a decrease in ATP production. This absorbed light creates an initial or primary response. That primary response then triggers a host of beneficial secondary responses. The four primary responses are 1. Nitric oxide release. This creates vasodilation of the blood vessels which means they enlarge, allowing more blood and more oxygen to flow throughout the body. 2. Cell permeability meaning Important minerals and ions are now able to enter the cells to allow the cell to thrive. 3. Singlet oxygen or free radicals are produced, which are oxygen molecules with an uneven number of electrons. In small amounts, this is beneficial to encourage chemical reactions in our bodies. And 4. As we discussed in the previous slide, ATP energy production. As a direct result of these four primary responses to light, a cascade effect of secondary responses is set into motion. Now, don't worry, these will not be on the test, and you don't need to understand all of these, but let's quickly run through them. Dilation of blood vessels and lymphatic vessels for drainage. Normalization of cell membrane electric potential, ATP production gene expression, which is part of the process called hormesis, which we will delve into more. Synthesis of RNA, stem cell differentiation, cell division, DNA and RNA synthesis, growth factor release. Collagen synthesis, which increases healing, reduces fine lines and skin. Angiogenesis, which is new blood capillaries being formed. Immune system changes, balancing of neurons, increase in beta endorphins, which can decrease pain, reducing C-reactive protein levels, which reduce inflammation. Many of the diseases or disorders we face have underlying issues that light can benefit. Again, it's not necessary for you to know or even fully understand each of the many biological and physiological effects of light. More important is the understanding of what red light therapy does for the grand scheme of your health. So for the purpose of this beginner course, we will focus on the wavelengths most studied. These are red, which have wavelengths between 600 and 700, and near infrared, approximately 790 to 1200. Now there are many names for light therapy that you may hear. Red light therapy is the most common. But you may also hear laser therapy, cold laser, biostim, low-level light therapy, and photobiomodulation. The last, photobiomodulation, is the agreed-upon term for the science community. It's also a mouthful. So red light therapy is the common street name, as generally it's the red light that stands out to most, even though red is but one of the ranges of wavelengths used. Red wavelengths found in the 600 to 700 nanometer range is one of the more studied and used wavelengths. Remember the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cells? Red light stimulates these little guys to create more ATP energy, which are the little fuel molecules that give our cells energy to do necessary day-to-day -day work in our bodies. Red penetrates the skin and superficial underlying tissue, blood, and lymph. Near-infrared, also called NIR for short, is just beyond the visible spectrum. This range of wavelengths serves a similar purpose as red, but it penetrates much deeper into the body to aid muscles, joints, organs, and brain. Although it reacts slightly different within the cell than red, it has the same effect to increase production of ATP within our mitochondria. 
In this presentation, you may hear me say light therapy or red light therapy or photobiomodulation. Just know that I'm referring to the same thing. The most important takeaway from this first chapter is that the main and most important function of light in the body is this. Specific wavelengths of light give ourselves a jump start to create more cellular energy that is necessary to support life. These wavelengths of light are more important for the health of our cells than most people are aware of. Our bodies react positively to light by going into overdrive and creating copious amounts of energy molecules called ATP. And let's remember that these same wavelengths are found in the sun. But with technology, we can now put these same wavelengths into devices at greater powers, which can vastly help the human body without the negative effects of the sun.